Would you believe it if I told you that I'm holding a GPU? Yeah. Is this not the cutest little GPU that you've ever seen in your life? I love the blue accents. So Intel just released these. These are brand new Gen 5 PCIe. It's not just the Arc B50 that replaces the A50. This is the Pro B50, which means, yeah, it can play your games, but it's meant for professionals and workstations and home servers. So today I'm gonna throw it into this rig right here, which is ridiculous because this thing can fit into a tiny little build. Maybe I'll do that one day, but for now, this is what I have. And it just looks ridiculous sitting in this giant box. And that's it. I plugged it into the PCI slot. Notice that I did not plug anything else in. There's power cables here from my power supply that I use in my bench for other GPUs. This one doesn't need it. It gets all of its power from the PCI slot. No extra power cables needed because it only takes up 70 watts of power to run. Now, I actually contacted Intel and I said, can you send me one of these, please? I asked really nicely and they did. And I'm hoping that they'll do the same for me for the B60. That's the big brother. This is the baby. The baby is here. It's very capable. I already ran a couple of LLMs on it. I'm going to show you right now. And that's what it's really for. It's for machine learning and graphics work. But why? We already have the B580, right? That's the consumer GPU that I tested a few weeks ago. That one had 12 gigs of memory. This one has 16. 16 gigs of VRAM inside a tiny package like that is kind of unheard of at this stage in the game. And the B60 is supposed to have 24 and with a dual chip, 48. So what's so special about it having 16 gigs? Well, the price. Try to find another GPU with 16 gigs of VRAM at this price. It was announced at Computex at $299, but the price is raised to $349, which is still the cheapest card out there for this amount of VRAM. Here's some extra specs you might want to know about. The three most important things are the price, the memory, and the memory bandwidth, which is 224. It's not the highest memory bandwidth we've seen, but it's pretty decent. Now, Intel is comparing this one to the RTX A1000. They're placing it directly against this card. Here's their official graphic on it. NVIDIA A1000 has less performance performance, less value, because it's more expensive, $426. That's the graphics. And then the inference, machine learning stuff is on the right. We also have a much higher score in performance and value, even better value this time. The A1000, by the way, is a very popular professional level GPU. It only has eight gigs of VRAM, this card. So how can you even compare a 16 gig card to an eight gig card? Well, even at eight gigs, this card is $100 more. If you take a card that has 16 gigs, the A2000, which I don't have here, but let me know in the comments if you do wanna see that comparison. The A2000 is over $700, it's almost $800. So hopefully that sets the stage for you in the positioning of this GPU and where Intel is hoping to enter this market. They're not ahead, they're quite a bit behind. AMD already has GPUs out, Nvidia, obviously. Intel has had GPUs out, but now they're catching up with these smaller professional kind of GPUs that have a lot to offer at a low price. So let's take a look at how it does with some of these models that we have here. Is this a platinum credit card? Nope, it's the Plod Note Pro, my pocket-sized meeting assistant. I've started with the Plod Note and Plod Pin over a year ago. They've been my silent assistants, taking down every meeting note for me while I stay fully engaged. And the new Pro takes it even further. All right, which one of these people would you rather work with? The one buried in their notebook or the one listening, present, and leading? PlodNote Pro uses four microphones with noise cancellation to record crystal clear audio from up to five meters away, even when voices overlap. And during a meeting, I can pin moments, jot quick thoughts, and take photos, all synced into one timeline. Afterward, the app delivers a structured summary, highlights key insights, and organizes to-dos for each stakeholder. Then I use Ask Plod, draft a recap email, brainstorm next steps. This is all powered by Plod Intelligence. It's built on top of ChatGPT and Claude, it remembers context, connects dots across past meetings, and actually helps me think through next steps and the meeting notes. And the hardware, AMOLED display, auto detects calls versus in-person meetings, Apple Find My, 50 hours of non-stop recording, 60 day standby, and 64 gigs of storage. My phone stays free, my battery stays safe, and it's end-to-end -end encrypted with global compliance. Your data stays yours. This isn't just another recorder, it's like a second brain. 
brain, an investment in focus and clarity. The subscription simply covers the AI that does the heavy lifting. Plotnot Pro, designed for leaders and for everyone who wants to become one. And right now, you can get 20% off the original Plot Note and Note Pin if you're just getting started. Check the links in the description. Right now I have here the Quen 3 4 billion parameter model. This is the new one. It's a Q4 Quant and it's a pretty small one. It takes about three gigabytes. I like this new feature of LM Studio that estimates the memory usage once you have everything enabled. Let's see if context length, yes, yes. Once you increase that context length, it'll tell you how much GPU is gonna be needed. And right now it says 10 gigabytes is gonna be needed for this tiny model. If you increase the contact lens to about 50,000 tokens. I like that feature. Even doing that, we still fit within the budget of our memory here. Let's take a look at task manager before I load that up. And yeah, there it is. We got 16 gigs. Let me hit load here. Now, just for those folks that are curious about the back end here, we are using Vulkan for this GPU. We're not using Intel specialized libraries because LM Studio doesn't have that support yet. Dedicated memory is 12.8 out of 16. That means we can run something. I'm gonna give it a nice, decent prompt that I like to use. And by decent, I don't mean like, there's an indecent prompt. I'm sure there's indecent prompts, but I don't have any of those. Uh, uh, let's go with this one right here. It's called Design a Scalable Web Architecture. All right, here we go. And that's going pretty nicely. Look at that. We're using 97% of the GPU. So Vulkan is working really, really nicely with this. Vulkan is great. And look how fast it's going. Now, I did notice that the fan here is really blowing out a lot of hot air. It's not super loud, but it is working pretty hard. So if that camera dies while I'm talking, you know it overheated. 51.75 tokens per second for Quen 3 4B. Let's do another popular model, which is this one, GPT OSS 20B by OpenAI. And LM Studio is telling me that only 23 out of 24 layers can be offloaded to the GPU. I don't believe it. I think we can do all. Let's do all. I'm gonna do all 24. Now I did set my guardrails to relaxed. Guardrails is what uh, keeps the memory in check. If there's too much of a demand from a model, it's gonna say we can't load it. Uh, you can turn that off completely, but I've had my system crash and freeze and burn, uh, not burn, but freeze if I did that before. So I'm gonna set it to relaxed. You can see up here the GPU estimate is 11.89 and I'm at context length 4,000. If I push this, I'm afraid things might start breaking. So let's start at 4,000. 4096 and see what happens there. Is it gonna load? There it goes, and it loads. It loads fine. Let's run a prompt here and see what happens here. It is a thinking model, so it's gonna do that first. There it goes. 39 tokens per second, that's pretty good. Now I ran my automation script against this system and I have a bunch of prompts here, starting with these really long prompts, 17,000 tokens, 44,000 tokens. Those two did not run by the way. And then we have a long architecture enterprise prompt of 1200 tokens. We have a 2300 token prompt and a bunch of smaller prompts in the 100 range. These are all programming related prompts, except for this one. This one just says, hi, and I know you love that. <laughs> well, the high prop never does well. It's over here. It's the short, simple greeting, and it always has this largest amount of variance. I wonder why. But in general, you can see that we're pretty consistent, staying between about 35 tokens per second for this one, which is the long programming project, up to about 42 tokens per second for the medium programming prompt. By the way, this is just a first look at this card. I'm probably gonna do more videos about it because it's interesting. And also we'll see what happens when the B60 comes out. But if you're using this professionally, you're probably going to be doing something on Linux with it using VLLM. So yeah, we're gonna get slightly different numbers uh, later on. So stay tuned for those. Now let's do some comparisons. Here's M1 MacBook Air. <laughs> it does stuff, but it's down here. It's the purple one. M4 MacBook Air. I don't know if you're interested in my MacBook comparisons, but I like to compare a wide array of machines. In fact, I recently did a video on all the different base MacBook Air models. Go check that out. So the M1 and the M4 are significantly slower, but if we take a look at the M4 Max, yeah, it blows it away. That's my daily driver right over here. What about this new breed of AMD's APU, the Ryzen AI 395 Max Plus. Ah, I forgot the name again. Look at that. 
GMK Tech has one in it. The Framework Desktop has one in it. And yeah, that does really well. And that's an APU, not even a dedicated GPU. So it does pretty well. But here we are. The red one is still the Intel one. Should be blue in this chart. <sighs> Come on, chart. Why didn't you figure out it should have been blue? Let's take, for example, the short, simple math prompt. Intel does 39.9 tokens per second. Framework desktop 46 and 46.6 from the GMK Tech Evo X2. There's a few here that the framework refused to run. Not sure why, but a few of the longer prompts. This long programming project, the GMK Tech did 50 tokens per second compared to 35.9 from the Intel machine. And here's a medium programming prompt, 60 tokens per second from GMK Tech, 56.4 from Framework, and 42 from the B50. Like I said, this is just a first look. Let me know in the comments down below if you want to see more videos about the B50 and specifically a comparison maybe with the A1000, a direct comparison. I haven't had a chance to do this one yet. But for now, take a look at my B580 video, which is right over here, and my Framework Desktop video, which is right over here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.